When I was little, my father was famous. He was the greatest samurai in the empire. Hey everybody, over the past few months, there have been a lot of back and forth on this channel discussing conservation of momentum and energy regarding the idea of the Earth being stationary versus the reality of its motion. Flat, stationary Earth proponents assert that if the Earth were in motion, we should be able to tell by simply watching controlled collisions because they will result differently if the system is in motion compared to how they will result if the system is stationary. I have been explaining repeatedly that collisions and objects in motion act the same whether or not the system is in motion as long as the motion is uniform. Stationary Earth proponents have challenged their opposition to go out and do experiments in the real world. Get on a plane, a train, a treadmill, and very often recommended, a moving walkway, and demonstrate an action, a collision, some projectile motion that has predictable results when the system is stationary, and see that when the whole system is in motion, the collisions will be different. And they claim, since those collisions will be different, that is evidence that collisions and motion would be recognizably different than predictions if the Earth was moving. As it is with all these claims, globe deniers tell others to go out and do these demonstrations, but they don't do them themselves. Which brings us to this guy here. This little gem is known as a Newton's Cradle and is a great demonstration of conservation of momentum, uh, energy, and because we don't live in an empty void, it demonstrates friction as well. The motion of the device is very predictable. If I release a ball on one side from a specific height, it collides with the others at a specific velocity with a specific momentum and sets the cycle in motion. I used a simple cardboard divider to release from the same spot as best I could. Now, what you are seeing here is the same clip repeated over and over. This was recorded in my home office, a stationary location, except for the motion of the earth itself. I'm not trying to pass these off as different. You can see the carpet on the right side of the clip and see nothing is moving in the background there. I wanted to show you this and let you get a sense of what this looks like and sounds like when the system is stationary. I do, however, have these nine other examples of the cradle in another location. Some of these are in a moving setup, uh, others are in a stationary setup. I've turned the sound off in order to hide the location for a bit. Let me play them again for you. Now, I've cropped in a little tighter on these because there are some obvious visual cues that I wanted to hide from you, though if you look close enough, there are still others in there. The point being, you can't tell from the collisions which ones are happening with a system that's in motion or stationary. And unless you use visual cues from the reflections, you can't tell which is a system moving in the same direction as the first drop or the opposite direction from the first drop. Because, as I have said this entire time, it doesn't matter if the system is in motion or not. As long as the motion is uniform, the interactions will be the same. Okay, I'm going to make this full screen in a moment and turn the sound on so you can get all of the input, chaotic as it may be. I'm recording this narration from a hotel room in Wilmington, Delaware, where I'm on a business trip. And on my way here, I got to the airport a good half hour earlier than I needed to, in order to put this Newton's cradle on a nice, long, moving walkway. You see, unlike a person running or jumping on a moving walkway, a Newton's cradle is small enough not to affect the walkway. Now, look, this wasn't a difficult thing to do. It was uh, in the public area of the airport. Anyone can do it. You just have to not worry about being embarrassed at being a grown man lying down on a moving walkway repeatedly, while people who don't know you look at you judgingly as they leave the baggage claim area. Globe deniers could have done this themselves. So take a look at these and see that aside from the visual cues you can get from looking at the reflective surfaces, the collisions are all in sync and you can't tell which setups were moving or in which direction. Okay, one more time and then the reveals. Try to figure out what the setup is for each one, or as many as you can.
Five stationary, four in motion, two moving with the initial drop, and two moving in the opposite direction from the initial drop. And try as you might, without looking at other information in the video, like vibration and extra swinging, there's no way to tell whether or not the system is moving or in which direction. And I'm not showing this in order to say, see, this proves the Earth is moving, because that's not how evidence works. What I'm saying is, the simple motion and interactions of objects in inertial reference frames like this can't be used as evidence either way. So that piece needs to be taken off the board. When you try to use it, all you're doing is showing your ignorance of the laws of motion. That goes for your uneducated globe deniers like Daniel Pratt or Todd Peachy, who to his credit, has deleted his primary channel and seems to be stepping away from this discussion. To the educated ones like Brian Mullen, whose old videos are having a resurgence for some reason. Even though I have a sneaking suspicion he figured out his errors and abandoned this concept and is probably horrified that his name is still being used to promote this noise. So, globe deniers, stop trying to use the laws of motion. You're no good at it. And next time, instead of challenging others to go out and do experiments to prove you wrong, go out and do the experiment yourself. Be honest about the results, and then we'll talk. Take care, everybody.